<laughs> oh my boy! Hello guys, it's Shitkin Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome for for my channel and welcome to my channel as for this video we have the review of the new adrenaline 24.6.1 drivers and as i say in all my videos 24 is the year 2024 6 is the month june and 1 is the revision in that same month the first revision of june and in this case the first and the last revision and the only revision actually now we've been waiting for quite some time for a new driver release almost a month, an entire month for driver release, but I can tell you right away that these drivers do bring some really, really interesting things. Lots of fixes, obviously. So, uh, um, finally, official support for Anti-Lag 2 in Counter-Strike 2 as well. And we have way more things in the mix. Really interesting things for some, maybe not for all, but definitely interesting for some. Oh! And I know that he wanted this video yesterday and I should have released it yesterday, but I actually value my sleep and i've been sleeping quite poorly and finally the yesterday and yeah i slept better way better so i kind of need to turn my brain off <laughs> for some moments uh and go to sleep uh and then get up early and do the videos like i'm doing today but well that doesn't really matter to the topic so let's go to the release notes but before let's just lay an eye to the sponsor today's video sponsor is gvg Mo. Bringing you lots of software deals like Windows 10, Windows 11, Office 2019 or 2021 with a new Windows 11 design. And for all of these you can use my SKG discount code for 30% off, getting a Windows 11 serial key for $22 and a Windows 10 one for only $15. Then use the key on your Windows settings and you'll have an activated system. So release notes, and like I told you we have lots of new things. Firstly, we start with new game support with the first Descendant and Once Human, games that I don't really have, so I didn't test them. Then we have expanded Hypertoon support, Hypertoon profiles for Like a Dragon 8 Infinite Wealth, Overwatch 2, the first Descendant, F1 2024, and Outpost Infinity Siege. And if you don't really know what HyperRx is or what Hypertoon games are, HyperRx is kind of a uh, of a mix of several things in just one. For example, if you enable HyperRx in a game that has uh, or that doesn't have the Hypertune profile, it will enable RSR, which is Radeon Super Resolution, which is basically FSR 1.0 algorithm, plus Radeon Boost, Radeon Anti-Lag, all those things at the same time. That's what HyperRx does. It enables all those things at the same time and sometimes even AMD Fluid Motion Frames. So it enables Radeon Boost, uh, upscaling, frame generation and so on at the same time. And if you have a hyper-tuned game, it means that AMD actually made a specific profile for that game and instead of using RSR, it should be using uh, FSR inside that game. If the game has FSR, it will use FSR instead of RSR. Or at least that's how they say it works. I tested previously some months ago and it didn't work as intended in that question of RSR and FSR, but maybe it is working now. I don't really know. Then we have expanded operating system support with support for Windows 11 version 24 half 2. We also have now officially the Radeon Anti-Lag 2 support for Counter-Strike 2 that takes responsive gaming to the next level by introducing an in-game option to optimally pace frames, further reducing input lag on AMD RDNA architecture based discrete and integrated graphics products, meaning that the integrated GPUs like the Radeon 780M also work. Get a decrease in latency in Counter-Strike 2 of up to 40% with Radeon Anti-Lag 2 at 4K on a Radeon RX 7900 GRE graphics card and get a decrease in latency in Counter-Strike 2 of up to 27% with AMD Radeon Anti-Lag 2 at 1080p with the Ryzen 7 8700G and the 780M graphics. And in case you didn't understand, this means that uh, Radeon Anti-Lag 2, like the, the previous Anti-Lag versions, they work better when your GPU is kind of restrained. When you're running your GPU at maximum usage, like 100%, like top-notch, Radeon Anti-Lag 2 actually helps, because it is at 100% where the GPU kind of has a bit more latency than it should, so Radeon Anti-Lag 2 will reduce your FPS by a bit, but at the same time will increase your latency by a lot especially once again when your GPU bottlenecked. If your CPU bottlenecked, 
using Radiant Anti Light 2 won't really help that much. And now for the AI lovers, we have technology preview for Windows Subsystem for Linux, WSL2, enabling PyTorch users with supported hardware to develop with AMD Rockham software on a Windows system, eliminating the need for dual boot setups. And this is this is huge, actually. If you're using the, the Linux subsystem or the Windows Linux subsystem, doesn't really matter. It means that you can actually use Rockham on Windows now. It is not directly introduced into Windows, but you can use it by using the, the um, Linux subsystem inside Windows, which is actually pretty good. Then we have expanded Agility SDK support, introducing the support for Agility SDK 1.613, and Microsoft's Agility SDK 1.614.0 functionality. With Microsoft DX12 WorkGraphs 1.0 API, with WorkGraphs support for the RX 7000 series graphics, which is great, GPU upload hips, shader model 6.8, and the R9B9 G9 E5 support for render targets and UAV. I don't really know what this last one is, but for example, in terms of work graphs, it is a thing that Microsoft actually implemented in order to make the, the games work much better in terms of CPU bottleneck. Meaning that, for example, if games like, let's say Jedi Survivor, if games like Ark, for example, were properly, use, were properly using the, um, the work graphs instead of the normal one that we have now, it will work much better with possibly way lower CPU overhead than they have now. It will take time for us to see actual improvements because according to AMD, it needs to be improved not only in drivers, but drivers and the game. So if developers don't really use it in game, the drivers won't really do much. But well, it is what it is, I guess. And now after all these new things, we finally have the fixes and improvements. Starting with Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas may fail to launch, which is great because people were complaining a lot about AMD cards not launching the game, it seems that it is finally fixed. Improvements to intermittent driver timeout or application crash experience while playing Helldivers 2 on AMD RX 7900 series GPUs. So it seems that after the, the previous fixes, only the, 70, the 7900 series GPUs were having issues, and it seems that well, it is not entirely fixed, I don't really know why. I personally tested by a bit, like one hour or one and a half hour playing Helldivers 2 and it was fine. My experience is that at least for one and a half hours, it was fine. Anything besides that, I don't really know. And the last fixed issue is intermittent system freeze or low FPS on hybrid graphics notebooks pairing certain FreeSync enabled displays. Now we have the what to know section with AMD Radeon anti Light 2. Basically, anti Light 2 will be enabled by default in Counter-Strike 2 Advanced Video Settings menu. And yes, I tested with the new drivers and it was enabled by default. anti Light 2 unlocks improved responsiveness by adding in-game pacing of the CPU with the GPU particularly in GPU-intensive scenarios, like I told you before. As for the known issues, we still have some, starting with visual super resolution, virtual super resolution, sorry, or display color enhancements may be set to disabled after driver upgrade. Resolution targeted for the 24.7.1, which might not actually take that long. Corruption may be observed while playing Dying Light to Stay Human Reloaded Edition with Radeon Boost enabled. I still don't know why AMD is focusing on Radeon Boost, just don't. If you're using money to improve Radeon Boost or to put Radeon Boost money and time to put Radeon Boost on any other game or, or fix it or so on, just don't. Just forget about Radeon Boost and focus on improving the upscaling and frame generation. That's what we want. Another known issue is intermittent in-game corruption may be observed while playing Ghost of Tsushima, Director Scott with AMD Software Adrenaline Edition record and streaming and HDR enabled. That's a, a huge mix, but well, at least it is in the known issues. Intermittent black corruption may be observed on scaled 3D models while using Origin or Origin Pro application. Resolution also targeted for the 24.7.1 drivers, which is fine. And then we have the meme, with audio and video may intermittently become out of sync while recording using AV1 codec in AMD Software Adrenaline Edition. Resolution targeted for quarter 3. But yeah, this is kind of a meme, this is an issue that has been occurring for like one year, maybe one year, maybe maybe it will get as long as the um, as the issue that we had with the black with the black screens with 
with Radeon, it was what, what? Enhanced Sync, yes, with Enhanced Sync, but finally got fixed. <laughs> yeah, what I mean, we got here. Now, with this all said, we have this little notebook with new things, good things and bad things that I found. Starting with the new things, well, we have a different installer layout, mostly in terms of privacy. Uh, they now ask you two times if you actually want to share your data with AMD and if you want to send your data slash telemetry to AMD, which is really cool. And if you are having issues with your drivers, please check these boxes in order for them to fix the issues that they're having. It is really important. If you're not having issues at all, ignore it. But if you do, just check these boxes. I also saw that in these drivers, I saw USB power on drivers and power drivers installing. Actually had a bit more black screens than before when installing the drivers. And the drivers also require the restart in most of my builds, while the previous drivers actually didn't. It was just, well, I of course that, that I rebooted, but uh, they didn't request the restart or the reboot. While in these new, these new ones, they do. Basically, that's just it. As for the good things that I found and are not presented in these drivers, for me at least, the HDR slash washed out colors problem is fixed. I actually had these washed out colors when, for example, I turned, I turned off the monitor and then after some time I turned it on again and I would have washed out colors and I would have to restart the display driver by pressing Ctrl, Shift, Windows key and B at the same time. Um, <laughs> And now it is fixed. It is just fixed. I tried in two in two different GPUs and it is fixed. Thank God. This was an issue that has been that have been happening for like four or five driver versions and it is finally fixed. Another thing according to a Twitter user, and by the way, thanks for the tweet, is that Quake 2 RTX performance is now fixed, or at least way better than it was before, actually hitting the the higher the highest performance. Uh, at least in those benchmarks. After the after one driver release, I don't really remember which one was, like the 24.1.1 or something. The drivers started working worse with Quake 2 RTX, but it, they are finally actually now on par with the previous drivers, or even slightly better, which is great to see. And the last one was also brought to my attention by uh, by a user in the in the channel as well, which is that the VRAM temperatures are now available on the AMD OSD. I don't really know if they were available before. I I can't know for sure unless I reinstall one more time the 24.5.1 drivers and see if they were or not, but at least they are available now. Let me know in the comment section if they weren't available before and are available now for you as well. And the bad things, well, they are more like related to the majority of users, not me personally. Um, I did have some issues, for example, and the, and the... Well, what I mean with this is that some users online actually told me that with the 24.6.1 drivers, they were having stutters like crazy. Now, I also had issues with these drivers the first time I installed them, and I installed them with DDU. But then I used DDU again, reinstalled the drivers and everything was perfect, okay? So maybe you need to do that as well. And if you didn't do before, just update Windows and update chipset drivers, which are very important. And we have a, a newer version like one month ago, maybe two weeks ago, maybe. Make sure to have everything updated in order to not have issues and so on, so on, so on. But that's it, basically. And well, guys, that's all for today's video in terms of goods and bads. For me, at least in terms of black screens, blue screens and everything, everything is fine so far. I did have uh, a crash with Spider-Man Spider Remastered yesterday when using Ray Tracing, Frame Generation, FSR 3.1 after playing for a, quite a while, but I will test it today once again to see if it will still crash or not. Maybe it is a crash like some people were claiming about Ghost of Tsushima that was crashing as well for me. It never crashed, I played the game with three different AMD GPUs with frame generation enabled and it was working fine. With Spider-Man though, I did have those issues, I will try again to see if they are, if they were just spontaneous or if they will happen after some time. If they do, that's a bummer, but that, not, that might be not from the drivers but from the frame generation implementation, I don't really know. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video, leave your comment in the comment section and let me know what you think about the drivers, about the performance, remember us as a community are stronger than the single individual. Thank you once again guys and see you in the next video. Cheers.
Humans. Homo sapiens. Us. We have always pushed the boundary as explorers, pioneers, trailblazers. And now Far Zenith is taking the next leap into the future. That's why we're proud to have resurrected the Odyssey. When our governments abandoned in orbit, Far Zenith will actualize in less than a decade. But that's only the beginning. When the ship is complete, we will send the Odyssey and her crew where no one's gone before. immediately. We promise nothing nefarious will befall you. We promise. Resistance members, report to the VIP section of your nearest intake facility for compulsory behavioral modification. It will be fun. Fun. 